Come gather round people wherever you roam And admit that the waters around you have grown And accept it that soon you'll be free Writing has always been evolving, whether that fact has been acknowledged or not. The earliest forms of writing were crude methods to convey messages, histories, and other information. However, as the process of writing evolved, so did the writing itself. With the invention of the printing press, and eventually the typewriter, there was no denying the omnipresence nor the changeability of writing. Likewise, writing in the classroom has had its own set of changes. Before the 1970s, writing had primarily focused on the end result, i.e., the product. Though in 1955, a book entitled Why Johnny Can't Read by Rudolf Flesch called attention to the deficiencies of our American school system. Daniel Hager of the Mackinac Center for Public Policy summed up Flesch's thesis by saying that American educators were botching the job of teaching the nation's youth how to read. He alleged that the teaching technique used in our schools was all wrong. He insisted that children could learn to become proficient readers if correctly taught. At that point, attention was called to the problem within the English classroom, and the focus of writing in the classroom began to shift focus from product to process. The discourse was even furthered when Flesh's sequel, aptly named Why Johnny Still Can't Read, was published in 1983. While the traditional form of writing has had its merits, the advent of our society's dependence on technology has left classroom writing in the dark. But there is an answer. The composition classroom does not have to be the only aspect of our lives relatively unchanged or untouched. Embrace the multimodal culture and enrich your composition classroom with it. After all, multimodality is not limited solely to digital environments. Rather, it has been encouraged over a much longer historical period by the advent of various non-digital technologies, engraving, film, photography, recording devices, animation, and television. Multimodality, however, is met with some resistance and trepidation. But not all change is bad. While much has changed in society and technology, unfortunately, the composition classroom has remained stationed in the 19th century. However, according to the Henry J. Kaiser Found Family Foundation, media's use has skyrocketed among children aged 8 to 18 since 2005. The foundation found that these children spend 7 hours and 38 minutes per day using multimedia, but because of multitasking, they actually rack up about 10 hours and 45 minutes of media content within that 7 hours and 38 minutes. So the general student population is already familiar with this type of technology. Why not meet them where they are? The answer is that multimodality must be integrated into the, class, to the composition classroom. Jody Shipka, leading scholar in the field of multimodal composition, wrote that the history of writing in U.S. composition instruction, as well as its contemporary legacy, functions to limit our professional understanding of composing as a multimodal rhetorical activity and deprive students of valuable semiotic resources for making meaning. Moreover, multimodality is not a new concept in the classroom. Shipka mentions that composition has always employed different modes, such as the use of a picture or chart. For the classroom, Sonia Compton Borton writes that in the multimodal projects, presentation could mean the way students use pictures, text, and music to create their digital argument, or the way color and arrangement were used in the creation of a comic book. Not surprisingly, for the paper projects, the discussion of presentation most often took the form of, of the number of pages required and the fact that students lacked clear transitions in their print texts. Some individuals within academia do not understand the value of integrating multimodal composition in the classroom. As Borton further writes, many instructors continue to be resistant to teaching multimodal composition because they cannot see its connection to 
teaching print text compositions or its value to students in these introductory courses, which results in the curriculum remaining stagnant. She further states that the current method of having a rhetorical grammar to discuss print text issues and a design grammar to discuss multimodal text issues seems like too much of a disconnect for these composition instructors. Still, what real-world application does writing a research paper have for the average person in the workforce? How important is it to know how to format a work document in MLA? For most people, this kind of work does not apply. More likely, as the world pushes forward with technology, an employee would have to work with modern kinds of literacy that include video, sound, and or web-based text. Not only does multimodal composition have real-world applications, but it also has scholastic benefits that can, and certainly will, be applied to other courses. The Florida Center for Instructional Technology encourages the use of multimedia in the classroom, mentioning that some benefits of it are learning the value of teamwork, the ability to effectively critique and collaborate with their peers, and an understanding of how to think creatively. All in all, Students who learn how to compose in this kind of way cultivate better critical thinking skills and end up being better writers. Take, for instance, the following interview with a student who benefited from multimodal learning. Using multimedia helps me pay attention longer. I'm so used to using technology outside of school, so when it is mingled within my class, it helps to engage me. I often get distracted because of my ADD, like everyone else like you, and you, and you, and you. But when there's things such as PowerPoints, movie clips, or YouTube clips, gets me a little more interested than just listening to some professor talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk. Did I mention talking? Consider what students do outside of school. The Henry J. Kaiser Family Foundation also reports that about half of young people say they use media either most, 31%, or some, 25% of the time they're doing their homework. The Foundation additionally reports that high levels of media multitasking also contribute to the large amount of media young people consume each day. About 4 in 10, 7th through 12th graders, say they use another media most of the time they're listening to music, 43%, using a computer, 40%, or watching TV, 39%. Therefore, when they get home, they might start their homework, but more likely, they'll wind up on their favorite social media site, think Facebook or Twitter, and converse with their friends. They might also be looking up videos on YouTube and or listening to a music site, such as Pandora. Chances are, even if they are working on their homework, they'll be using these other kinds of modes. While students use a wide range of literacy experiences outside of the classroom, they end up shut off from it them in the traditional classroom. It is as though students are taught to stop thinking the way they naturally would when they step into their antiquated classrooms. Also, multimodal composition lends itself to a wide range of learning opportunities for students. Shipka says that they involve fundamental issues of rhetorical sovereignty, the rights and responsibilities that students have to identify their own communicative needs and to represent their own identities to select the right tools for the communicative context within which they operate, and to think critically and carefully about the meaning that they and others compose. When we insist on print as the primary and most formally acceptable modality for composing knowledge, we usurp these rights and responsibilities on several important intellectual and social dimensions, and unwittingly limit students' sense of rhetorical agency to the bandwidth of our own interests and imaginations. So, if we are to expect students to keep up in our high-tech, globalized world, we, as their instructors and family, must give them the chance to learn in a way that will prove to be more conducive to the kinds of work they'll be expected to do when they enter higher education and the workforce. We must integrate forward-thinking types of instruction and a multimodal composition class should act as ground zero within our educational institution. Thank you for your time.